conclusion. Let us look at the effects of diazepam on the dog. The advised dosage is between 0.05 to 0.45 mg per kilogram, but in this case, we use 0.8 mg per kilogram. However, we see that the panting stopped and the body temperature lowered, and there was no hypothermia on further inspection. This leads us to conclude that the dog has fully recovered, and this tells us to be flexible and treat animals on a case-by-case -case basis. Following this will be the review and summary of the entire case by Dr. Singh on Sunday, 28th August, 2016. Okay, now uh, this case is uh, very interesting in the sense that the heat stress was detected very much early by the owner and so the outcome of treatment was very good and successful in the sense that when they phone the owner today, the, the owner says that the dog is normal and active. So that is a good outcome of the treatment. Now, we will see the blood test results of this uh, heat stress case. We'll go through the history first. Now you can see on 25th of August, which is three days ago, the owner exercised the dog at 1 p.m. under the hot sun for around half an hour. Then, uh, after going back to the apartment, the owner noticed the dog started to pant non-stop, non-stop panting. The tongue was maroon in color and the dog was unable to stand up, it was recumbent. So that would be about probably one hour after the exercise. Then when the owner came to Topaya Vets, it was around 3 p.m. on that day, which is roughly about two hours after the exercise. And we checked the temperature was 42.4 degrees. 42.4 degrees. Due to the sudden onset and the history of exercise, and uh, so I diagnosed heat stress. Now, heat stress, if it's treated early, is actually very, very uh, successful. But most owners come late, maybe after four or five hours later, but in this case, for two hours. So, the dog was given IV Dazepan or Valium slowly uh, about 0 0.8 ml and you can see from the video the, the painting slows down and when we took temperature which is actually only about 10 minutes after the, the, the temperature was taken at 42.4 you can see that my intern shows that it's gone down to 39.8 which is still high because the normal range is 38.5 to 39.5 but uh, it takes time for the temperature to drop so at 340 I asked them to take so you can see the, the temperature drops to 38.9 which is still a bit high then in the evening in the evening the dog of course was given IV drips and also, uh, Betrio plus uh, protein drips as well. The dog was sleeping upside down, that means belly up. This shows that it's normal, because that's, her, that's his normal behavior. So the next day, 26th of August, about 11 a.m., we took the temperature, the dog was already okay. You can see the temperature is 38.5 which is the, the range, the lower range of 38.5 to 39.5 and the dog has already been active and no more panting so I would es estimate that he has recovered fully and so he was sent home now you can see that today today 28th of August uh, just called the owner the dog was back to normal so, so you can see that uh, if you treat a heat stress dog early and promptly by lowering the temperature with diazepam and giving IV drips to stop the dehydration. And dehydration is seen by this PCV 64, which should be 37 to 0 0.55. That is the indication of dehydration. Plus, you can see the red blood cell count 9.2, when it should be 5.5 to 8.5 at that time. 
of emission when the temperature was 42.4 degrees. And this one, the hemoglobin was 22.3 when, when the maximum, the high, highest range is 18. So these two plus this one indicates dehydration. This dehydration would have killed the dog if if uh, there's no IV drips given. So we given two bottles, IV drips plus amino acids, glucose, Hartman, and amino acids. So, so we're given for the the whole day. Then you can see now, interesting part of, of, about this uh, differential cell count is, you can see that neutrophils have actually gone down, gone down, because normally it's 60 to 70 percent. The absolute is 2.35, normally is 3 to, 3 to 11.5. So it definitely, the absolute neutrophils gone down. Uh, neutrophils gone down, of course, the lymphocytes will go up because Lymphocytes is 43.8%. Uh, Normally, lymphocytes should be less than that. Lymphocytes should be... The normal lymphocytes should be... Uh, let me see. The normal one should be definitely less than 20%. Okay, anyway, what is important is the diagnosis. Now, the diagnosis of heat stress is confirmed. And also, we check whether there's any effect of the high body temperature on the liver. You can see the leg was unable to get the value, so I would say the liver, the liver had either the enzymes were too high, so that you cannot analyze it. So the liver was really uh, damaged under the the high body temperature of 42.2. The glucose is okay. You can see that is 4.1 within the normal range. Cholesterol is okay. And now we look at the calcium. Calcium is still okay, 2.53 normal within the range. Uric acid is okay within this range. Now the the lab say the specimen is grossly hemolyzed. That's why they can't get the results of these liver enzymes. So I wouldn't know whether the liver is probably abnormal due to the heat, heat high high body temperature but uh, not so serious, such that the dog dies from liver failure. But now we look at the kidney. The uh, kidney urea, interestingly, is normal, you see? Normal uh, 5.9, which is normal range. And the creatinine is the important thing here. Okay, here, creatinine here. Hmm. So the, the creatinine, you can see this is important. Creatinine indicates liver failure if it's high. But it's interesting is that this dog actually is normal, you see the kidney. So 125 is 89 to 177. And uh, in conclusion, this dog definitely had uh, heat stress uh, based on uh, sudden onset after exercise under the hot sun. Under the hot sun, exercise under the hot sun, number one. And number two would be the non-stop painting, the maroon colours tongue and uh, these are the two things, the history of sudden onset exposure to the hot sun for at least half an hour and also the signs and symptoms of painting non-stop and recumbency. Now my assistant actually thought it was a heart failure or so she wanted to set up the emergency oxygen but uh, they wouldn't help because it is uh, not the problem, it's not the heart failure or, or, or the lung pneumonia. Now the thing is that do a proper physical examination, don't rush into it because if you rush into emergency oxygen giving to the dog, you may get the wrong diagnosis, take the body temperature, which obviously is high because of the, of the, the panting. The dogs cannot, cannot sweat, they pan through the, through the mouth. So, but this temperature is very high, 42.4. Normal is 38.5 to 39.5. 39 now, this, this uh, high temperature could be, of course, due to a bacterial virus infection. But uh, the main thing is the history. So, you must get an accurate history. Uh, in this case, the husband doesn't really know much. He said it was 10 o'clock 
the dog went for exercise, so actually it was 1 p.m. According to the wife, who said that it was very hot on that day as well. So you must get a good uh, history, which unfortunately the owner, the husband didn't give a good history because he got the timing wrong. But anyway, according to the wife, after 1 p.m. they went home to the apartment. Then soon after that, maybe half an hour, one hour, the pending started. And so they rush to top of your beds. By the time they here, it's 3 o'clock. So roughly, there is 2 hours, 2 hours of high, high body temperature of 42.2. So if it's not, the treatment should be to bring down the body temperature. Now there are two ways. One is just soak the dog in warm water. And uh, the other way which I use is drugs. Now normally for, for high, high uh, body temperature, the best is valium uh, IV, not uh, subcutaneous or not uh, the IM because IV is faster. And this video which my intern will show, you can see the, the pending starting to slow down and then uh, much less from emission to the time 20 minutes later. So this, this part, the, the, the video will be shown. And then after that, of course the dog has recovered fully after IV drips. And also blood test is important. Blood test is, is to, is to uh, confirm that uh, there is no bacterial infection. For example, increase in white cell count, total white cell count, and neutrophils. In this case, neutrophils did not increase, neither did the total white cell count. As you can see here, the total white cell count uh, was actually low, low, in fact, due to the probably some damage to the, the white cells due to the high body temperature is actually low. And uh, the neutrophils, neutrophils is an indicator of bacterial infection. You can see neutrophils actually 54.7 which is a bit low because normally is 60 to 70 percent to 70 percent normally so it is a bit low but uh, important thing is the dehydration which we have to treat to prevent death uh, from dehydration dogs and people can die from dehydration very fast because the not enough salt and sugar not enough salt especially for the heart so the heart will stop beating and also uh, not enough fluid uh, so dehydration will provide uh, fluid to the body so you can see that uh, this is dehydration based on inc increase in fluid cell count hemoglobin and PCV the three things PCV hemoglobin red cell count and uh, so this concludes the case of a successful treatment of heat stress provided it is uh, sent to the vet early within probably three hours or within two hours is better I think in this case the, the owner did come within two hours of developing the symptoms of rapid rapid breathing non-stop panting and, uh, and recompensing after exercise under the hot sun this concludes the case for more information, you may email the following address or visit these websites managed by Tuapayo Vets.